Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Aldina and I make IT and programming related videos. So if that is something that is of interest to you, then consider subscribing to my channel and give this video a thumbs up as well. And in this particular video, I want to answer a question that I see very often in my messages. And that is, what kind of PC am I using for editing my videos and then for gaming as well? Because I like to play games sometimes when I have free time. So this is going to be a budget PC, which means that it is going to be under a thousand dollars. And since I ordered it, the prices of the components went down even more. So you may as well get it at a better price than I did. And it is a very good PC. Now, I didn't want to buy a pre-built stuff because I knew exactly what I wanted and I made a custom configuration for myself. And my needs were a PC that can edit and render in 4K and for everything to run very, very smoothly. And then I needed it for gaming and for development as well. Now, I often have a lot of software running on my PC. I have often a database server and then APIs and then front-end application clients, so um, I really needed a good PC, but my main requirements were for editing and then for gaming as well. So if you are looking for a editing PC, I would say that two most important things to invest your money are going to be CPU and then RAM memory. And when it comes to CPU, it is better to look for something that has more cores rather than faster individual cores. And the CPU that I got is a AMD Ryzen 53600. It is a six core, 12 threaded processor with base speed of 3.6 gigahertz. And it is really a very good CPU. Now I know that there is this very often asked question of what is better, what should you get, Intel or AMD? And I think that if you go with Intel, you will probably have to invest more money in your CPU. And um, I honestly did not see the need to do that because this CPU here is really a beast. It is really a good CPU. So I would definitely recommend this. Next very important thing is your RAM and I wouldn't go with less than 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and if you plan to edit in 4K then you will probably benefit uh, from even more RAM than 16 gigabytes, probably 32 gigabytes. And I got for myself HyperX Fury DDR4-3200 and I wouldn't recommend going with memory that is slower than 3200 because AMD processors perform better with faster memory. Another important thing is going to be your SSD. So I went with one terabyte of Kingston A2000 NVMe and that should be enough. And it is really important to invest in a SSD, especially if you plan to edit in 4K. If you are building editing PC exclusively, then you do not need to invest a lot of money in your GPU because most of editing softwares actually rely on your CPU rather than on your GPU, unless you are planning to use something like DaVinci Resolve or you are building actually a gaming PC. And in my particular situation, I'm actually using a software that is very heavy on the CPU rather than on GPU. It is called shortcut and it is a simple free editing software and when i'm editing actually my gpu is like used two percent it is actually sleeping 99 percent of the time so i wouldn't really need a good gpu for editing but since i want to use this pc for gaming as well i got myself a good gpu and it is this one here so it is a gigabyte GeForce GTX 1660 Ti and it is a very good graphical processing unit but again if you do not plan to use this PC for gaming and then you do not plan to use something like DaVinci Resolve I would rather invest my money in a good processor and then RAM memory and storage and things like that rather than wasting money on a GPU. Now, one thing that you may or may not want to invest your money in is a liquid cooler. And I really wanted to get that for myself because when I'm playing games, when I'm editing, I do not really want my CPU to overheat. So I got this liquid cooler here. It is a, I'll say, I hope that is how it is pronounced. 
and it is a liquid cooler and one thing that was very important for me is that it is a low noise design and then it has a very nice RGB on it so my PC kind of looks like a disco ball um, and I would like to film that with my phone's camera but it is not really that good but I have a couple of pictures of my PC that I have taken with a professional camera and I'm going to include those here so that you can see how nice it really looks. And then the casing, just make sure to get something that has enough space and helps with airflow and helps with cable management as well. Now, depending on how much money you want to invest, you can go with RGB lighting case, tempered glass side panel, or you can look for something more affordable. It is going to be really up to you. Now you've probably seen some images of my PC here because as I said I cannot film that with my phone's camera because it is not that good but if there is a company that wants to sponsor me with a good camera you can send me an email or DM me on Instagram on Twitter I'm going to leave the links to my social media in the description of this video. Now once I've selected all of the components I looked for a motherboard that is compatible with them and I would recommend using pcpartpicker.com to check the compatibility of your components and for myself I got a AMD motherboard it is this one here it is MSI MPGX 570 gaming edge and I needed it to be Wi-Fi but if you don't it is probably going to be cheaper that way so it is a very good motherboard uh, let me put this somewhere and then the last but not the least is going to be your power supply unit. Now in the past I had problems where my PC would just shut down or actually it would restart while I was rendering. So that was because it didn't have enough power. I don't have those types of problems anymore and currently I'm using a power supply unit which is this one here. It is 80 plus gold standard fully modular power supply unit and it is a 750 watt now I believe that for my configuration it should be enough to use a 650 watt but just to be sure because of the problems that I had I went with 750 watt PSU so I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you have gotten some interesting information and that you have gotten an idea of what kind of PC to look for if you are building a gaming or editing PC and if you did make sure to give this video a like and then subscribe to my channel as well. And thank you for watching. I'm going to see you in my next video. Bye.